Hey, back segment tonight looks like Iraq on the verge of collapse as Al-Qaeda has now captured two major cities and the Iraqi army has fallen apart. This after the USA invested more than a trillion dollars in that country and saw nearly 4,500 Americans killed, more than 32,000 injured. Incredibly, some liberal Democrats continue to support President Obama's foreign policy, which some believe is ineffective. In fact, one congresswoman actually thinks the Taliban are not terrorists. Let me underscore uh, the term terrorist. The Taliban is part of the fabric of Afghanistan. They were part of the leadership of that country before we engaged there. So uh, to say that they are terrorists at this point is not necessarily accurate. Are you kidding me? Apparently, Ms. Spire missed the Taliban attacking the Karachi airport in Pakistan a couple of days ago and all of the other terrorist actions they've committed. Joining us now from Washington, Fox News strategic analyst, Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters. So I think the jihadists are winning. I think they're actually winning right now. Am I wrong? No, you're, you're correct. You know, as far as the congresswoman's statement goes, that's right. Taliban aren't terrorists. They're community organizers who happen to slaughter women and children, kill doctors, kill teachers, burn clinics, and, of course, attack the Karachi airport, in addition to killing Americans. You know, nice folks. Yeah. But, Bill, you are fundamentally right because... <laughs> After Obama swearing in his last re-election campaign that Al-Qaeda was, that he personally defeated Al-Qaeda, let me tell you, when he took office in his first term, Al-Qaeda was broken. Today, Al-Qaeda's descendants, such as the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, ISIS active in Iraq and Syria now, Al-Qaeda in its many forms is far stronger than ever. And the event we just saw, with these jihadis seizing Iraq's second largest city, Mosul, 1.4 million population, and seizing today to crit Saddam's old hometown, in addition to Fallujah, we're seeing two things. First of all, forget that line on the Rand McNally lapse, written maps dividing Syria and Iraq. There is now a new state, a jihadi state, stretching from central Syria to central Iraq and continuing to expand. And, you know, it's about what people fight for. Okay, well, we got to explain like that. We got to explain that, okay? Now, now, here's what's going on so everybody knows what the colonel is saying. Assad is fighting a civil war. He is the dictator of Syria. Syria is north of Iraq, all right? One of the people, one of the groups fighting against Assad is al-Qaeda the fundamentalists, the jihadists that want them out of there and they want to take Syria over. They have an army there. Their army is now infiltrated into Iraq, joining with other Iraqi al-Qaeda's. That combined force is overwhelming the Iraqi army, which we trained and armed. They are now deserting, giving up. 40 miles is what separates Baghdad, the capital, from Fallujah. 40 miles! And al-Qaeda controls Fallujah. So, it's over, in my opinion, unless Iran comes in on the side of Maliki, the Iraq dictator, or president, whatever you want to call him, and pushes him out, uh, which Iran could do. But then Iran controls Iraq, not al-Qaeda. Mm -hmm. But the fundamental thing is the Obama administration has lost control of foreign policy. You yeah. see that in Afghanistan with this crazy deal they made for Bergdahl. Now we see Iraq going down the drain. You just heard the border. That's a foreign policy issue. You just heard that they can't stop the millions of people coming in from the border, and everybody knows it. So Bill, it's, it's out of control. Bill, the root evil here is that after we won in Iraq, defeated al-Qaeda, won and stabilized Iraq for purely political reasons, President Obama withdrew all our forces, did not leave a small yeah, residual force. Yeah, but that's not force. quite fair. You know that Maliki would not indemnify the U.S. troops. That's what we wanted to keep no, them there. Bill, you you Bill, can't try that. Bill, go, Bill, go. no. Obama did not try to get a deal. That was all a Are you sure horse. he did not try yes, to get a deal? I am sure, I'm 100% sure, he did not try seriously to get a, a, a deal. He didn't. A small residual force left him in Iraq. Would, it, things would be different in Iraq, in Syria, and Iran. Then he made all these threats about, against Assad in the first year when there was still hope for a secular rebellion and did nothing. I mean, it's from Nigeria and Boko Haram to Pakistan and Afghanistan and the Taliban, oh, the jihadists are winning. There's it's no all question falling about apart. It. And you add in Putin seizing Crimea, our foreign policy is in disarray. 
I, and, and it's coming fast. All of this stuff is happening fast. And it's not happening in a vacuum. All right. The no. Taliban is not attacking an airport and the jihadis aren't attacking uh, Mosul in a vacuum. They see the weakness. And now everybody's coming. Here they come. Last word, well, Colonel. The, in the Middle East, the United States is now in its weakest position since 1945 and the birth of the modern Middle East. Jihadis are winning because they are willing to die for their fanatical cause. The Iraqi soldiers, Syrians and others aren't willing to die no. for their dictators. And we are facing a problem, if not caused, as I believe, at least exacerbated by Obama's dilatory incompetence, uh, we're facing a problem, Bill, that is going to plague us for many sure, years to come. because once the jihadis get control of a state, they can strengthen themselves and attack America. All right, they Colonel, have a state. We appreciate it. Directly ahead, two liberal Americans will react to what Colonel Peters just said. Later, Miller on Fox News being the most trusted TV media agency in the country. Wow. Up ahead.